Today on Strength Coach Tutorials, I'm going to show you how to make this completely dynamic KPI dashboard in Google Sheets. Some features of this dashboard, you're going to be able to select your athlete's name from a list of different athletes, as well as the KPIs that you want to display on the included charts. This is going to be a really powerful tool if you keep all of your data in Google Sheets and want a quick and easy way to visualize it so you can show your athletes whether they're making progress or whether they're regressing. So let's get after it. Okay, so we're back and we are starting with a blank sheet inside of Google Sheets and we are gonna make that dashboard that I showed you in the intro video. So just to give you an idea of how this is set up, I'm gonna to go to my data tab and what I have here is just a bunch of athlete names. So I basically have two in there and then the date which the test was performed, the test, and then the score of the test. So that's just gonna be an easy way to set up the data and we could really set it up however we want but that's how I'm going to do it for right now. So then the next things that we want to add are we want to add the ability to select the athlete name as well as both of the KPIs. So I'm going to just type in here athlete name KPI 1 KPI 2 and I'm just going to color these cells um, for the selection so I'll bold these and then I'm going to color this one yellow just to signify that I want a selection there, and then maybe a light kind of orange there. So just like we do in Excel, we're going to want to create a drop down list here where we can actually select our um, values out of. So I'm gonna go to data and then data validation, and here it's gonna have the option to do a list from range, and I'll select the little Google Sheets icon here, and it's gonna ask me what the range is, I'll go to my data. And the cool thing about Google Sheets is we don't have to use a unique or a filter function or anything like that to filter down our values. If there are more than one value, it will automatically only give you the option to select one of them. So in this case, we're gonna just select the A column for our name and we're gonna start at A2 and double dots, we're gonna go all the way to the end of A. And what that's gonna signify is A2 all the way down the cells. And when I hit OK and hit Save, I'll go back to my dashboard that we're making. And you can see there are lots of Daves and Johns in there, but it only gives me the option to select one of them. Okay, so we're gonna do the same thing now for our KPIs. And I'm going to select both the cells at the same time. Go to Data, Data Validation, List from Range. And I'm gonna to go to my um, data tab and then I'll select my KPI column and I'm going to C2 all the way down and hit OK. So now we can select both of our KPIs as well as our athlete name. Now the next thing that I want to be able to do is actually have some data populate based on the values that we select. So an easy way to do that is we're going to use a filter function within Google Sheets. I'm just going to do it over here. I'm going to type in KPI1. And what I want to do is actually filter out all of that um, data based on our selection. So what I'm going to type in is equals filter. Open that up. And the range that we want to filter from is basically the date, the test, and the score. So I'll select these three cell or these three kind of columns. And then I'll go back to my dashboard. So you can see we've got data. B to D and then comma. The condition that I want is that the name matches. So we're gonna select the first um, column and I want that to be equal to where I've actually selected my name. And then the second thing that I want is that the KPI matches. So I'll select the KPI cell or column and then I want that to be equal to the first KPI that we've selected and I'll close that off. So what you'll see is we have filter, all of the data columns that we want and then we want the ones where data column A matches our name and then data column C matches our KPI. And when we hit enter here, what you're gonna notice is it actually pulls out all of the values. So this is similar to how a spilled array might work inside of Excel except for it's gonna spill right and it's gonna spill kind of vertically. So that's a super powerful function just to get us to pull out a lot of data at the same time. 
I'm gonna make sure this is working. If we were to change to the squat, you can see that it pulls out all the squat data. And if we were to change to Dave, you can see that it pulls out Dave's data. So then from here, because we're gonna graph these and we want them all to sit on the same kind of scale, we're gonna actually convert these to a Z-score. So I'm just gonna type Z-score up here. And what a Z-score is, is it converts all of the values to a standardized um, format, which is how many standard deviations they are away from the mean. So what we're gonna use here is a function called standardize, and I'm gonna hit equal standardize. Open that up, it's gonna ask me what value I want. In this case, I want N2. And then it's gonna ask me for the mean, and an easy way to do mean is just average. And then we're gonna take the average of all the values. So we'll just take the N column. And then it's gonna ask me for the standard deviation and I can use a function called STDEV. Open that up and I can select all the values again. And then I close this off. And as I hit enter, you can see it's giving me my Z-score and it's also giving me the option to fill all the way down. So I can just hit the check mark icon and it's gonna automatically fill all the way down. So that's our Z-score. And then if you know anything about Z-scores, we might want a plus one value and a minus one value. And what that basically means is it's gonna allow us the opportunity to see when our actual scores are more than one deviation and less than one deviation away. And that can just be an easy way to um, see when an athlete is performing better than their norm. And we can set those to whatever we want. You might want half of a st standard deviation or you might want one and a half standard deviations. But for the purposes of our video, we're gonna use a plus one and a minus one. So from here, all we have to do is actually create our graph. So what I'm gonna do is insert a chart and it's gonna give me a chart here. And over here on the right hand side, it opens up the chart editor. I'm going to select a line chart and then it's going to ask me what I want my X axis to be. And I want it to be our dates and I'll hit OK there. And then it's going to ask me what I want my series to be. And in this case, I want it to be our Z scores and I'll hit OK. So you can see it's already added in our Z scores. And then I'm going to add some data labels to these. So I'm gonna hit add labels. Oh, doesn't seem to like that very much. Let's add another series. So we'll add our plus one series. Whoops, it's actually, sorry, it wanted me to add those as the labels. So let's change those into the actual labels that we want. And what I've made them is the actual scores from the test. So you can see that as this goes up, you can see that the scores are increasing and as it goes down, you can see the scores are decreasing, but it'll always be on the same scale of zero, which is the average, um, plus one is one standard deviation, and then plus two is two standard deviations. And if we were to switch it to the counter movement jump, you can see the graph changes, but the scale doesn't. So this is a really powerful way to visualize all of your actual performance data. And let's edit this chart again. And let's add another series. So let's add our plus one series. And you can see it just gives me a line there and we'll add our minus one series. Hit okay. So we're gonna change the colors of these lines a little bit. So I'll go back to edit chart and we'll go over to customize and we'll go to series and we'll do our plus one series. And we want that to probably be like a green. Maybe I want that to be like a dashed line. And why I would want that is when I'm performing above one standard deviation, I'm having a pretty good day and I'm probably performing pretty well. And then minus one, we'll make it a dashed line and maybe we wanna make that a red. So you can see, now we'll be able to see when an athlete is performing below one standard deviation of their normal. And that would probably signify that they might be having kind of a bad session. We'll go back to edit chart. And then one last thing we might wanna add here is in our series, if we go to, sorry, if we go to our series and go to our Z-score, maybe we wanna add um, a tread line and we can make this, I don't know, maybe like an orange color. 
and you can see now just a trend line if that athlete is improving. So you can see in this case that athlete's um, getting worse, but if we were to pick the other athlete, maybe their scores are going up. Okay, so it's just an easy way to visualize the trend that your athlete um, might be experiencing on their actual kind of tests. So then the, the process of just making this for the second um, graph is pretty much the same. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna copy this and I'm just gonna paste it over here and I'll just copy this formula. I'm gonna paste the actual formula over here. So um, right here, I'll paste it. And in this case, instead of we want C2, but instead of this, we want C4 and I'll hit okay. And you can see what it's done is it'll pull out those values as well. And because we've left all of this kind of intact, I can just paste all that over and it should all work normally. So you can see it's all referencing the right areas. And then it's just about changing this graph's data around. So I'll go back to edit chart. And in this case now, let's scroll over our X axis. We actually want to be, oh, not labels. Our X axis, we want to be this one right here. We don't want labels on that. And then our series, we have to just reselect. So I'm gonna remove all these series actually. So we'll add all of our series in. So we want the first series to be the Z scores. Hit okay. And then we want the second series to be plus one. Hit okay. The third series to be minus one. Hit okay. And then we want these ones to have labels. Oh, it's made it to plus one, so let's edit that quickly. And then we have plus one, minus one. Okay, and then we'll go back to our actual chart and everything seems to be working appropriately. So you can see now, if I was to change counter movement jump, squat, the chart should be updating. Oh, there we go. So it's updating now. And that's just a quick way. And if we were to switch the athlete, now both of the charts update. So that's a quick way that we can create basically a KPI graph. And then one last thing that we might wanna to do to make this a dashboard. So because we're pulling out all of the values um, right on the sheet right now, we could easily put all this filtering on a separate sheet where all the calculations are being done. But an easy way just to hide it, because if I actually hide these cells, so if I right click, let me just scroll over here. If I wanted to hide these so that they don't show, you can see that our graphs actually have no data. So I'll undo that. But an easy way to do that is if, if I just change the font color to white, now they disappear, but our graphs still have all the data. And then maybe we go to view and we turn off grid lines and we can start to put together sort of like this dashboard. And Google's gotten a lot better recently and they actually like snap things together kind of. So you can see now the charts kind of snap together. And again, they're fully dynamic where we can select any athlete and see kind of how they are performing. And we could easily add more tests or whatever we wanted to the actual data. So that's just a quick way to start to think about creating some dynamic dashboards in Google Sheets. Google Sheets is a super powerful tool because it's based in the cloud and it will work the same on any computer that you are using. So I hope this video helps you out. And if it did, could you please smash that like button, subscribe to the channel and share it on social media. That would be very helpful. And I will see you in the next video.